Hello and welcome everybody to the Hunk Room channel. Today we will be having a guide on Divinity Original Sin 2. We will start with the Rogue. So the Rogue class benefits from Finesse mostly. So this is Sibyl. Sibyl uses Finesse based weapons and therefore she doesn't really need strength. As you can see I added one strength just for armor and then we have all her points in Finesse. There is the finesse based weapon. The finesse based weapon is daggers and some rapiers. Also bows and crossbows. As you can see, the one handed axe is a strength based weapon, unlike the dagger, which is finesse. Intelligence, she doesn't need much because she's not a caster. Constitution is self explanatory, it adds, adds to your base health. So, intelligence adds 5 points of damage and vitality, and constitution adds vitality now the memory memory slots those are for your abilities and you open the skill book with k and as you can see i have one memory slot free for sibyl the damage is based on your weapons and critical chance is based on your wits which adds one critical dam damage chance and one initiative initiative is who moves first basically more initiative means you move first there was a slight transition there because i had to cut some stuff out and then we have a physical magical armor that's based on your armor and as you can see i need a better helmet than this because it's only level uh, it's low level and then you have your resistances to fire earth damage water damage air damage poison damage those are based on your skills and also on your armor there's the finesse dagger as you can see then you enhance them with runes as you can see the rune in a weapon increase it adds 11 percent earth damage earth resistance if it's slotted in armor and maximum vitality if it's slotted in a neck piece here's my vitality vitality is 540 which is your health Now this is Beast. Beast is actually an interesting character because you can uh, play him as a caster or as a tank. And I have chosen to play him as a tank. And you can see his intelligence is rather low at 12. And that's basically base. That he doesn't have anything else. He has Aerotherge, Geomancer, and I have added Necromancer and Hydrosophist to his uh, skill set. That way he can heal a little bit. Aerotherge has a lot of buffs party buffs self buffs and so on and there we go necromancer adds 50 percent 50 percent heal it's pretty decent for a tank and necromancer abilities receive a bonus from intelligence but it's not that great of a bonus because uh, most of it is based on your level as well so as you can see it does a lot of damage 64 to 72 with decaying touch but it also adds decaying and in fact uh, does about 99 damage and his other abilities except for shield bouncing shield do about the same damage bouncing shield is actually a really powerful ability which does about 169 damage and whirlwind does 63 to 73 so his intelligence is not that detrimental his damage is 80 to 96 that's based off of his base attack and as you can see the Decaying Touch does about the same as his normal attack damage. Shackles of Pain don't do damage. Bloodsucker basically heals a party member based on the amount of blood that's around them. And in fact infects a uh, enemy. His strength is 23 which adds about 65 extra damage. He doesn't have finesse because he doesn't use finesse based skills or weapons and intelligence is rather low at 12 uh, because he doesn't use magic basically he has only one magic damage ability and that's his character specific constitution adds base vitality seven percent per point over 10 points and he has a decent amount of constitution it's not really that detrimental to him 
He receives minus two constitution from Spider's Kiss, as you saw, but he receives plus two wits. Wits adds to his critical strike. He has 625 health, so he doesn't need that much constitution, as opposed to 540, which is about 100 more than Sibyl. It's actually 75 points more than Sibyl. Sibyl doesn't have any constitution gains. And that's about it for Beast. As you can see, his constitution plus seven points. I, I've spent seven points in constitution. From gear, he gets four. And I've spent three. So that's a total of uh, seven in constitution. And wits, he gets a four. Plus two from Spider's Kiss, plus two from gear. That's 4% critical chance. That's pretty much all he needs. He doesn't really need to do a critical damage. Memory, I've inserted six points because he has a lot of skills that he needs to use. From Air Thurge boosts and Hydrosophist, he gets a heal. He gets Bloodsucker from Necromancy. His initiative is plus 14, but that's uh, what he gets from Wits, basically. He's a pretty decent tank. He has a lot of armor, as I'll show off in a little bit. Initiative, not that important. As you can see, initiative determines turns, uh, turn order. During combat, teams take turns attacking individuals with higher initiative attack first, basically. And that's experience and so on. His movement is basically how far he can move per action point in combat. Movement for Sibyl is really important because she is a melee attacker, and she doesn't have any magic abilities. She gets movement from Scoundrel. As you can see, plus 1.8 movement speed. That's an orange. And that also increases your critical damage multiplier. Plus 180. As you can see here is plus 150. Sibyl is plus 180 because she gets 30% critical multiplier from Scoundrel. Now let's check out Ifan Ben Mezd. Ifan Ben Mezd is a crossbow based finesse attacker. You could call him a rogue. He is a hunter specialist. So finesse adds basically extra damage to his crossbow. Ben Mezd is a little bit different than uh, Sibyl because he can't backstab. So you need to add a little bit of wits to him. Backstab is basically an automatic critical strike. And he doesn't have that on his weapon. Backstab weapons are daggers, basically, and some swords which use finesse. So we need to add a little bit of wits because his high damage crossbow does a lot of damage. So critical chance is a really good thing. So we need to have a lot of whips, wits for Ifan Ben Mezd. And as you can see, I have 20 wits, which adds 10% critical chance. And we have from ranged, which is his abilities, plus 4%. From gear, we have 2% 2 ingenious adds another 5%. And his critical multiplier is only 150, as you can see from the list. Here's ranged, it's in combat abilities, I have spent 4 points, and that adds 20 damage, and plus 4 critical. Now it adds 20 damage only to uh, ranged weapons, bows and crossbows. He's got leadership from, skill, from skills and abilities, and gear, and geomaster he's got base 5, plus 2 from gear, huntsman he's got base 3, plus 7 from gear. That's why I haven't spent a lot of points in Huntsman, because he's got a lot of gear that adds to Huntsman. Huntsman basically increases his damage when he's attacking from higher ground. So it's kind of important to have him in high ground. And he doesn't have that much mobility because of his uh, weapon. Crossbows add subtract mobility. But as you can see, 
his ingenious get some 5% critical chance. So talents are important. Try to keep your talents to the skulls. I also have Pet Pal, which allows you to talk to animals, and Savage Sortilage, which basically adds his critical chance to his magic abilities, which is why I don't don't bother spending a lot of stuff in intellect, a lot of points in intellect, because his critical chance is his basic damage multiplier. In battle, you want to stri uh, basically critically hit with his abilities, and he's a Geomancer, so he's got a little bit of... He's got assortment of damage abilities and and he also heals your armor and he has a heal from huntsman he gets first aid from huntsman i don't know why i have those there and i also have contamination which is a geomancer ability i'll just move it around in the bars i don't know why i have a shovel on my bars so right now we just Let's move it over so we have all our healing abilities at the same spot. I'm sorry, I'm arranging my bars while I'm doing this. Bless is something that Godwoken get. Godwoken is uh, basically your... ...goal in the game. Alright, so we have our healing abilities on this side. And regenerative ab abilities. Encourage is a human passive. Well, not a passive. Active ability. It's a human special. So there we go. So we don't make a mistake while in combat. You can lock your skill bar right there. Let's get back to his strength. Strength is only 12. He gets once from, uh, one from gear. Constitution is 11. He gets one from gear. Intelligence. Base 12. He starts with 12. I haven't subtracted him. And as you can see, I dumped almost all of the points I can get into wits because he's wits based essentially i have some pretty pretty decent gear in if and ben mezd and as you can see his resistances are right there leadership is a combat of, uh, social ability that you can get later on not later on you can put points into it there it is combat ability leadership so basic cross, crossbow gives you minus one movement, which is why his movement is only four. He can go four meters per action point in battle. So he's a little bit slower. He can move, uh, his range of movement is a little bit less than everybody else's. I still think crossbows are better than bows. Bows do a little bit less damage. Well, actually not a little bit, a lot less damage than, than bow, uh, crossbows. So maybe they'll balance it out. And as you can see, his memory is He's got one free slot. So that's how you set up a crossbow rogue. Uh, rogue. You basically stuff everything into wits. So his critical damage is... Uh, he's got a high chance of critical damage. Basically one out of every five shots is critical. And that's pretty decent. Especially if... If Anbezmezd is being used as a caster. Now this is my custom character. I use ones in each hand they do pretty decent damage especially if you have dual wielding dual wielding is a pretty decent c combat ability for ones but i mostly use my spells and i have savage sword village so my spells get critical chance Critical chance, and as you can see, I use bartering a lot for Ifan Ben Mezd, and he's got thrifty, and all humans get thrifty as a standard talent. I got mnemonic, basically three extra uh, memory slots. Ingenious gives me five extra critical chance. Elemental affinity basically allows me if I'm sitting on water or something that's electrified, I get to reduce my spell cost by one action point. But it cannot be less than one point. My pressure strike is always one point. I, I can't cast it for free. And that's basically elemental affinity. It's pretty decent for casters. Especially if you have a caster that doesn't have to be sitting in poison 
or um, an oil. Those are your Geo Masters and such. If you're not using Necromancy also. So if you want, if you have Aerothurge or if you have uh, Hydrosophist, it's it's good to get Elemental Affinity. Comeback, comeback Kid is pretty decent for your tank because if you raise them, if you die and they're resurrected in combat, Comeback Kid will be active again and it will, will, will allow you to resist death and bring you back to 20% health. So if your tank doesn't get a chance to heal up before he gets struck again, Comeback Kid will save him once. If he's outnumbered, obviously, he'll die. So my custom character is a wizard, so I have all my points in intelligence and wits. As you can see, intelligence, I get four from gear and the rest is base. So I have spent 10 points in intelligence. I have 24. And those are 70% plus 70% extra damage because it's base 10. So you subtract 10, 14 times five is 70. 70% 70 extra damage is what I get from intelligence, which is pretty decent. All of my spells are basically intelligence based. Constitution, not important for wizards. Memory, really important for wizards. Uh, let me just open my skill book. There you go. I have only two memory slots open, even though I have spent six points in memory. So I will fill those up for summoning later on. I don't know what I want to do with summoning right now. So I have Pyrokin, uh, I don't have Pyrokinetic Scoundrel, Polymorph, Necrom Necromancer. I have Hydrosophist, two from gear, base six, three, uh, three from gear, base four for Aerothurge, and summoning I have base two, two from gear. So summoning, I am not really sure what to do with summoning, but Rallying Cry is really cool because it gives you vitality and magic armor. And I will heal up Sibyl so you can check out what exactly, what it does when you have a lot of party members around you. And if you have a summoned companion next to, next to her, it, it will add that too. 360 vitality, 118 armor, or 48. Magic armor. So as you can see, that's a pretty powerful ability. And Dome of Protection is a human passive. That's basically it. Dome of Protection is a human passive, and it gets you... Uh, gets you protection from magic projectiles, is what I meant to say. Ben Mez has a special. If uns uh, Soul Wolf, it's his special. He doesn't get the human special, which is a shield, magic shield, uh, which basically just adds magic armor to your party the whole time and vitality. His is he summons a wolf, and it benefits from summoning ability. So if un Ben Mez as a main is a pretty decent idea because you'll get the cat that way and you can make him a hunter with summoning and geomancer you can mix and match the three and he will become a pretty decent uh, uh ranged that way because he'll have the support of a companion as well and that pretty much covers all the classes you have your rogues you have your strength based attack types and you have your hunters as you can see ben mez is very versatile because he has first aid and he also has Metal Mending, which heals the whole party. Restoration is also a decent idea if you have a wizard in your party. So Hydrosophist is a really important one. Teleportation is pretty cool because you can get to places you normally can't get. And Necromancy is great for your melee types. Because it's all short ranged abilities. They all go for physical armor. They're all resisted from physical armor. And you get a pretty decent heal out of it too with Bloodsucker, because pretty much every single time you do damage, direct damage, either piercing damage or damage with the armor down, you spill people's blood. Goring Guile gives you plus one to, to sneaking with Beast, and Sturdy gives you plus 10% maximum vitality, plus 5% dodging, so that makes him a great tank. So I, I recommend, if, if you like tanks and melee ranged, I mean, physical ranged. This is a great party to have with a backup of a wizard, especially. 
because wizards, well, we can regen uh, magical armor and so on. Necromancer is great for self-healing because it gives you a heal of 10% per point. And if you stack dual wielding or single-handed, you also get a little bit of avoidance as well. And there we go. I need to stack a little bit of memory into Beast. And I hope to actually continue this guide next time. So look forward to this guide part 2. Now let's check out a fight. Just real quick. Just to show off what the party can do together. First, inspect your enemies to see what their resistance do. And as you can see, my wizard is pretty much gimped in this fight because he has both water damage and shocking damage and they're all resistance, resistant to it. So let's try to get their magic armor down a little bit, even though they have about 50-40% resistances to it. So you're not going to do full damage. Let's get our magic armor up. And let's get ready to do some fire damage and earth damage to them with if and Ben Mezd. There we go. Let's do a sky shot on this guy. Get his physical armor down. Because we will be taking him out as quickly as possible. And Beast can do a knockdown. So I am getting it set up for a knockdown. Knockdown enemies cannot attack for one turn. And there it is. I do a charge. Knock down a big guy. So he doesn't do a lot of damage. And now let's check out who should I hit. So battle stomp. I don't want to waste my knockdown on those guys because it will not go through their armor. Physical armor prevents knockdown. Should I do Shackles of Pain? No, I'll just buff my party so we can move. And we will heal Ifan Ben Mezd because he took a lot of damage. There we go. My magic armor is working. It didn't do any damage to me, it just took down my armor a little bit. As you can see, Sibyl can move one turn for free. Hurts, it? Which is why you don't bother stacking too much critical hit into her, because she can always move behind her target. And there we go, she's just doing criticals the whole time. So she doesn't need a lot of wits. So the enemy took her took its turn. And they're splitting up in teams of two, it looks like. And they're focusing down on Sibyl. Water and air resistance 60%. So I am pretty much gimped as a wizard over here because I don't have a lot of fire damage or earth damage. At least on my main some wheel. I'll just do a dazzling bolt to get their magic down armor down. There we go. And I did a critical hit. With one action point, I'm debating exactly what I should do. Should I use a heal or maybe should I I should use encourage? Which all humans get, basically, as an ability. It's a racial ability. Impalement, physical armor. Maybe. Maybe I can get all three. No, I can't. I'm just gonna get these two. With the... A little bit less powerful. Rust spike. And... I could have used a fire arrow here. 
but I just use a regular arrow to get their physical armor down. As you can see, they're still focusing on Sibyl. And they try to apply a curse, but it failed. Physical armor would have resisted it either way. Here I do the bouncing shield, and now I knock them both down so they don't bother me anymore. This one is trying to run away from the oil because my next ability I would have used searing daggers to set it on fire and do a lot of damage. But they kind of deny me that possibility. And they're still surrounding Sibyl, and as you can see, her armor, magic, uh, physical armor is down. So I am contemplating what I should do, and I heal Sibyl with Rallying Cry. And as you can see, her magic armor is up, way up, and her health is back to full. Keep working on the ones that don't have armor. Trying to find them. Everything's blue, so it's, it's hard to see. Critical hit there. And this guy stood up with perseverance. Let's hit both of those guys with Earth Shock. And mend the armor on everybody. Mending is great. Now let's get some electrified arrows going. Now let's move beasts into position for a whirlwind attack where he's gonna hit all three of them. Well, he missed one. That's why accuracy is a important stat. You want to try to get as much accuracy as possible if you can. Not as possible. If you get it up to 100%, you're great. And Sibyl critically hits with a backstab. And he just takes the big guy out. So now we don't have to worry about that. Let's get some wings so we're not dependent. We're not getting hit by electrified ground. Polymorph is useful for that. You can get away from ground effects easily that way. Here I make a little bit of a mistake. I should have focused on that one. Yeah. Oh, there we go. And now I'm gonna hit him with a blast of water and chill him. Chill basically removes one action point every start. So they're shocked. Let's try to kill this one. It's a miss. Two shots would have killed it. There we go. I killed that froggy void frog. Slippery voidling. It's down. And this one takes a little bit of damage, air damage, going through the water, which is electrified and cursed. Which are the little worms that you see wriggling on the ground. We summon a fire totem, because, well, they have low fire resistance. And then we kill this one with fire. You think it's not dead, and then it's going to take its turn and basically die on its next turn. This one hits the bill for 62, which is not a problem because it just took away her magic armor. Move it out of the way and regen our magic armor, soothing cold. I kind of lost track of who's who and where. And I'm just going to use my wand on this one. 
boom, it takes 60 damage from fire. And let's kill this one because it's down low. They're still focusing on Sibyl. I don't know why. She seems to take a lot of dam uh, a lot of focusing fire. Uh, and almost all the fights that she does. There we go. Those chains basically make it so every single hit you take is the damage is uh, transferred to whoever's chained. Well, not transferred, but duplicated to whoever's chained. The build takes a little bit of damage from the cloud. And then we backstab the little frog to death. There it is, it's gone. I thought the fight was over. I forgot about the one that's still alive in the center of the group. And I went to the wrong place. So I make, make some mistakes in this fight, as you can see. But my group is never in danger. Our armors and our health is basically up at full. And I missed twice. So those slippery ones, they have a big chance to dodge. And there we go, that's a critical hit from Ifan Bemezd. And the fight is over. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time on Hankroom's channel.